Dolls. Something to think about. Dolls. 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 August continues to get scarier and scarier. I can't give you much more info, but just know that Carrie and I are spooked. <laughs> what won't August do to us? Literally, this has been- I'm in a place of clutch with my dog. This has been the worst <laughs> August on record in years. Hottest on record. It is a spooky time. It is one hit after the other. We Hall- have what? Nine Halloween. days, nine Halloween days left. Early. Halloween has nothing on August. I'm ready. We need a mass realization and an honoring that August is one of the most cursed months to ever exist. I think most people will agree with you. I think so too. But like, this uh, this August needs to end, <laughs> and not like end with my life. Like it just <laughs> needs. I need it to be over. But Jesus was seen. Jesus was seen. People are in a place of confirming Jesus's face okay. and shroud. Okay, but devil's ad. Okay, wait. Let me just okay. brief you. Let me brief you. Okay, so the shroud of Turin. Oh, which I, know. I didn't. You know probably. Oh, I've known and since Catholics I've, are well aware. I've been shroud of Turin headed since I was born. Literally since I was ten. You're born, and the first thing they do as soon as you open your eyes and do your first cry, they slap you on the ass, make sure you're alive as a baby, and they're like, "This is the shroud of turn." Actually, yeah, my dad told me about it when I was beginning to question if God was real. Okay, cool. And then he was like, "There's the shroud." Well, I was like worrying about death and like, so there's the no afterlife. <laughs> there's the shroud. And he went, "Well, what do you? How do you explain this?" And then he showed me. Okay, so. N- me, a Southern Baptist raised Buddhist, had no idea about the Shroud. So this was an educational moment for me when I read the Shroud news yesterday. The Shroud of Turin, for those who are like me, have no f- clue, is <laughs> the Shroud allegedly that like after Jesus was crucified, they Joseph wrapped him in the Shroud and put him in the cave. Joseph? And- Joseph of Arimathea. Oh, right. Not his dad. I think that is the Joseph. Mm-mm. It was a different Joseph. There's a lot of Josephs. So that's what I thought, but then I think his mom was there. Oh, Mary was absolutely there. Yeah, but then Joseph. M- Joseph was a lot older than Mary. I think Joseph was dead Age at that gap. point. Total, was a Joseph groomer. Like, he was like literally a groomer. like 60? Mary Joseph was, was cheating on his wife Mary was Mary. 14 when she gave birth. We got to Google this now. What J- Google Joseph of Arimathea. Is he Jesus's father? Mary was like groomed. Mary actually served so much because in my mind, Joseph was a 60 year old cheating on his wife with old 14 year old Mary. But she had the last laugh when she said, I'm pregnant. Yeah. With Jesus. He was a rich man who was also like Jesus's like hardcore follower. He wasn't. So Father. he was like a Patreon subscriber to Jesus. Totally. He was like cult member. Yeah. Level. Okay, cool. So Joseph, thank you for clarifying. Not to mansplain. No, just, I I'm appreciate a, the mansplaining and the I'm just a Catholic religious. Girl. Yeah. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Southern Baptists don't know these things. That's, I feel like Shroud of Turin is like defies creed or like religious sect though. Well, so the Shroud of Turin is allegedly what Joseph wrapped Jesus in. And then we all know that Jesus made the comeback of the century when he rose from the dead. And the the energy of his rising from the dead, like, took a photograph, basically. Yeah, or, like, the Shroud. So it lives in Tur- The Shroud is in Turin, Italy. Like, most Catholic things, like, even though all this shit happened in, like, the Middle East, somehow Italy has, like, the cornerstone. White of- people take everything. White people take everything. So they're, like, the Shroud of Turin was placed over Jesus's face, and then, like, somehow his face was imprinted in the Shroud, and it's on display in Turin. Mm-hmm. And so people have argued for years over, is it real? Is it fake? Right. And people dated it like a little while back and they were like this fabric's from like the 1300s yeah. nice try idiots but then someone else just dated it again and they were like actually it's confirmed from Jesus's time really they just confirmed oh Jesus was seen so now they took the shroud and they're doing an AI thing but I'm always like Jesus was not white no Jesus was like a Palestinian Jewish man Basically, he was from like Galilee and Nazareth and like those are all that's all Palestine. So he would have he was 
He was not, not white. Fair skinned. He was not fair skinned. But I mean, this guy's hot. Yeah, this he's, is a hot rendering. He kind of looks like Charles Manson. I know. I let they're like AI did a rendering of G. It's like yeah, you can log into Mid Journey and have it do renderings all day. Like what? But yeah, he was not they. <laughs> They've made him time. The time and honor tradition is just to make him look like a blonde man. Well, not blonde, but like honey colored yeah, hair. Honey wheat. Yeah. But he certainly did, did not look like that. He, there's also, there's an image, I think, was it Time Mag? Like they've been doing like, what did Jesus actually look like? And they've, they've done other where he's like dark and how he should look. See? Remember this one? Oh, yeah. Hair too short. But that's Didn't probably he have long hair. But that's I mean, that just is like what everyone has. Wasn't everyone's hair long back then? Not necessarily. Like, look, that's probably what he looked in the middle right there. Yeah. He looks like the traitor on industry. Yeah. That was itching himself and that's stressed out. Hot. Yeah. Jesus. Every image of Jesus. This I'm sorry. A, I like this Jesus. Every image a of Jesus. A little bit shaggier hair. I'm like. Yeah. Right? I'd let him Come hit. on. Let him let him eat out your ass with that big <laughs> nose. Did Jesus people say that he and Mary Magdalene had a thing? I think he That doesn't make him any less holy. No. Imagine Jesus. Probably incredible. In, he was probably like pan. He hung he was, out with he sex pan. workers, people who had like disabilities, like he was like truly like He was into on the fringe. Everyone. He liked everyone. Yeah. And he probably hung out with like homosexuals. He probably was down with it all. Well, yeah. That was like homosexual heyday back then. His disciples were all a little gay. Well, I think it was also like way more okay to be gay. Like it was not, people weren't even, they didn't even have the word, like gay didn't exist. It was just like, if you were a man, you f men. Yeah. Like that was just like part and parcel. And men were like, you, women were just used as like, oh, you have to have a woman around because you have to have a baby. They're literally just like a hole to like, in birth. Men are but like, men how, were like, that's you, who you can have like relationships with. And everyone was on the same page about that. And women were just like, damn, our lives. And then like everyone in like the 19th century ruined everything. Yeah. Then they were like, you're see me. They were like, you're kind of giving like energy and then they created that word and then gayness was born mm -hmm. but uh, before that it was just like no like i think it was like world war ii like after everyone ha was like you have to be butch now and being gay is bad mm -hmm. and they were like sorry we're gonna they're like if you're gonna be gay you have to like secretly be gay but also the disciples were like so not even just gay they were just like openly like emotional about christ they were messy gay bitches no but they like love they loved christ and like were like weeping and like not afraid to show emotion mm -hmm. how much has changed people were more in touch with their emotions back then judas probably jesus and that's why he was like a jealous lover mm -hmm. and wanted that's jesus why he sold his ass out for 30 silver <laughs> pieces yeah he says it's because he wanted him to be the savior and like use his powers to like eliminate the enemies but i was like no jesus Jesus said he wasn't going to do that. He was straight up with you from the jump. Jesus, do once, and then was like, I can't anymore. I'm with Mary now. And he was like, fine, I'm going to literally rat you out to the Romans. And Mary was the ultimate hag of the century. She laid the groundwork Mary Mag. for us all. Mary Mag. Mary Magdalene. She was like, Jesus is my best friend. And yes, we fuck sometimes. He's totally gay. But we have sex and it's fun when we're drunk a little bit. We've and had like, a little too much wine. Bitches, all you bitches want to be me. That's what she said to the disciples. And, and the they disciple were like, fuck you. We're erasing your book from the Bible. You're a whore. They're like, like, you're Yoko Ono. Yeah, you suck ass. And she was like. They Yoko Onoed her. They did. They were like, you are ruining. You've ruined. This is a man's club. This is a boy's club. And you ruined Boys it. Boys only. With your pussy. And she was Boys like, rule and girls drool, they said. Yeah. And she was like, maybe I'm the one that's like the most important to Jesus. She was like, I can't help Jesus in love with me. She went and investigated and saw the rock was lifted and yeah. was like, excuse me. He was the one that she, he appeared to her first. <laughs> he revealed himself to that. You, I know they she, were all jealous. They were, she was like, I just saw him. He is alive. And they were like, <laughs> He is 
fucking alarm. And they said, we don't believe you, bitch. And if we don't, if a bunch of men don't believe you, then guess what? You've got nothing in this world. Yeah, but then some, some like. We're in year zero. Then We're another. We're year one now. Yeah, an annoying man This song. ain't 2024. This is one. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually the this year is 33. This AD. 33. AD is after death. Oh. I thought it was Anno Domino. Oh, okay, yeah. Isn't it? I think Christ, when Christ. What is time? We are, we are like, def- we are having a debate right now. But basically, all it took was some man to see him on the road. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we believe him. And yeah, then Doubting Thomas you. was like, I need, because I'm a man, I need to stick something in a hole. I need to stick my finger in your wound. Okay, fast. And Jesus was like, yeah, fuck me, fuck my wound with your hand. <laughs> and he was like, all right. And then he went in and Christ was like, oh. Jesus was like, I can't come because I'm like the Holy Spirit now. But just trust me, I'm always coming. And it, it's real, bitch. If I was alive. It's real and it's huge. He went, <laughs> if I was alive. You fucking my wussy, my wound pussy <laughs> would make me come. My wussy. My wussy. <laughs> and, and Thomas was like, fine. And then Mary was like, okay, so this motherfucker gets to stick this his hand. This motherfucker over this here. This motherfucker is not- real. <laughs> and she's like, this guy gets to, has all he has to do is stick his finger in wussy. And all of you believe it. But I literally went and saw the boulder released from the cave. And no one, everyone was like, shut up, bitch. They were like, shut up, bitch. Go get pregnant. <laughs> How about that? that? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, fuck you guys. I'm out. And I'm starting an OnlyFans. Yeah. And she like moved to France. Yeah. What happened to Mary Mag? She died in France. They like made a cave for her. I read a France? whole book about her a couple years ago. I got like really Magdalene obsessed. I still am. She's still one of my still favorites. Am. Still am. Still am. Wait, she went to France? Yeah. That's she chic. like lived in the south of France. And they like respected her of course the french yeah the french get it but she had like a whole book in the bible originally that was supposed to be like her book in the bible that's her story and these they, idi- erased. they erased her of course erased. yeah but they found like scrolls there's like a, a lot of Magdalene lore out there. Do you think Mary was kind of like Meredith Marks, like stage mom a little? And was like, there's only room for one Mary in the, my son's life? Probably she was difficult to get along with. I think she was a hard mother-in-law. Yeah, she's always around. But always I guess around. I would be too if Jesus was my son. But I bet she was like, you're not good enough for my son. She probably felt... And then at the end was like, okay, I've come to like They you. had like housewives drama, probably. She was like, look, I'm not taking him away from you. Like, he's literally going to die, like, at 33. Like, I, there's nothing I can do. It is foretold. So this is just, like, we what fuck sometimes when we're friends. We laugh. We have a different relationship than you, a mother, with your son. And she's like. But like, we're both in this boat. Like, we're both going to miss him. And she's like, I was a child who was just minding my own business. And then an angel came to me and was like, hey, sorry, you have to give up your whole life. You're pregnant, now, you're pregnant now and you're going to have to pre- be with this fucking loser that's been grooming you and you're going to have to like just like hang with him and he's going to be like you'll have the last laugh because he'll know it's not his kid but you do for protection purposes just like have to kind of hitch your wagon to his whatever his cart yeah his mule like, cart and they're like Plus, now you're going to go on a journey across the desert and you're going to give birth in a manger. So. And you're going to have to watch your son die one day. Yeah. And she she's like, got. She's like, fuck. She's and then, like, damn. And then they were like, but by the way, once this is all over, you'll just get taken to heaven. Yeah. And people yeah. will worship you and make lots of statues of you and invoke you like all the time, make jewelry about you. And she went, Bella Vita. And the, and the Italians, especially <laughs> Italians and like sexy Spaniards. And, like, South Americans will be obsessed with you. Mm -hmm. And they're hot. You want that. And she goes, all right. She goes, and once in a while, you'll make a visitation. All right. she went, all right. Well, okay. Who who am I to say (laughs) no to that? (laughs) Anyway. That's, and that's that on fucking Christ. So. In related news. The Shroud of Turin, go see it. Now I want to go to Turin. You better go. Yeah. Turin's apparently a really cool club scene. I'm down. Maybe uh, maybe this fall. Watch the space. LVP and Ken are in foreclosure. They're having real estate drama. So they own a condo that I believe that they bought for their fail son, Max. 
Okay. Max has been residing in the condo, and then they entered a dispute with the HOA. You know a thing or two about HOAs. Don't get me started. They had, like, multiple liens put on the property. Yes. But now they, like, figured it out, and they said there's no lien. And then they also clarified that, like, a lien doesn't mean you're delinquent. It means, like, someone's trying to make sure of something or the other, which sounds like something a delinquent person would say. Of course, they have to make a clear through their attorney that this does not mean that we're criminals. We pay our bills. Yeah. Wait, also this is this revisionist history. Ken is 66. I don't believe it. No way. He's probably I think Ken is 76. He was 66 maybe like 15 years ago yeah. when he got pushed in the pool. Ken He's Todd. 77. Currently Ken is 77 years old. He was born in 1945. The Daily Mail is so in their fucking pocket. They literally will publish that Ken is 66. 66? How old is Lisa? She's 63? I don't believe that he's 66. Me neither. Show me the fucking... That means that my parents are as old as him. My parents are older. I don't believe that. Nice try, you old bitch. Nice try. So they're in (laughs) foreclosure. Well, they got liens... I'm just going to keep saying they're in foreclosure. I know, yeah. I'll let you live that truth. Okay. But now it faced foreclosure in 2022. Right. But now is no longer under that threat. But the most interesting part was that Lisa said in regards to Max, Max is selling it after living there for seven years. There was a dispute with the HOA that has since been resolved and there are no liens on the property. He will be traveling this summer and working in Idaho, where he spent 2020 during COVID working with autistic children and has returned to enjoy the summer there. That, he's in rehab, right? Yeah. Traveling and then working in Idaho means you are an opioid addict. Or she's just like, look how good he, he's such a good person. Like, he's an altruistic, like, giving back to the, you know what I mean? This, the autistic kids in Idaho. This is this spin she's putting on it's it. It's such though. a, such a Vanderpump spin. What's, everyone's going to Idaho. I know. The people with the heads up are in Idaho. They've been there. Real bought, estate pr- it, prices have skyrocketed now. It's too late. I forgot that in 2016 they bought a home for Pandora. But will Idaho be safe from the Yellowstone blast? Did you know, this is spooky, they built like a memorial for those kids that got killed in the house. The Brian Google, what's his name? Brian Kohlberger. Mm -hmm. They built like a, there's like a spooky memorial there. Yeah, because they raised the house, didn't they? Which is. That's bizarre. Which is Don't they need that as evidence? Well, yeah, that's why people think he might get off. When is this trial fucking starting? Because I need a trial. I need a trial to sink my teeth into for once. And I refuse. No one's thinking about me right now and what I need. I refuse. It's with a K. I refuse to watch that Lacey Peterson documentary. I can't. Oh, I've been in it. Oh, I can't. I have a friend, like a dear friend, who's a Scott Peterson truther, who she is like adamant that he did not do it. I know a lot of people who I like respect that believe that. Okay, so what's crazy too is that the whole Lacey Peterson thing happened while I was at Cascade. So I have like... So it was like truly has never been on my radar. I'm like, you were just I can't. Out of the I was out of the culture. Like it came and it went. And I was like, I cannot get into it and like can't bring myself to like really go there. But now with this documentary, I'm going there and I'm in shock. He fully did it. Right. There's no there's no way he didn't. It, He's it, hot, though. But like I would fuck. Oh All right. God. I would. I would. And wasn't it his mistress that came forward that busted his ass? Yeah. Good for her. I mean, look, I thought I had it bad with this, like, married Italian man. But the one thing I will say, hot. Oh, beyond. Oh, my God. Oh, you're telling me. He's hot. He's hot. The one thing I will say is that imagine if you were fucking a guy who was hot. And he was like, I love you. I think about you all the time. Went to the Christmas party with you. Like, my wife is dead. He took her to a Christmas party? Yeah, he, like, went to a Christmas party with her and took pictures. He said, he was like, I lost my wife, and so this is the first Christmas I'm going to be spending without her, and it's, like, really hard for me. And in your mind, you're thinking, like, I've hit the fucking jackpot. Like, this guy's fucking hot. He lives in, like, Modesto. He has some money. What? Mango. Yeah, he has some money. His wife's dead, so we don't even have to worry about that relationship. And then it comes out 
after you're like in love with this person that their wife is not dead. They actually were married with a child on the way and they probably killed their wife. That's worse. That's the worst case scenario. Amber Fry. Yeah. Or Frey, right? What is it? Either or. She didn't know that he was married. No. He was like in another town over, right? Or something. She had no idea. But at least, I mean, it's he good. said that he had lost his wife, and she came, and she testified against him, right? I'm not at that part yet. She just did a press conference where she like had she came forward and was like, "This motherfucker." She took it and to then a place all of conference. Lacey's girlfriends after the press conference like cornered her and were like, "We're obsessed with you." <laughs> they were like, "Thank you for doing that, bitch. Let's be fucking friends." Are they friends with her now? I don't know, but they had like a. They had like a kiki moment after the Lacey was so cute. I know. She was a real a a real Cali girl. Just like a joyful Oh, I can't. I can't. Every time I drive when I'm like going up to like SF or something and we drive like near we're near Modesto, I get like You think of Lacey? Yeah, of course I do. Well, no spoilers because I still don't know what's how ha- I don't okay. know how everything pans out, even though it's been twenty years of this being like at the forefront of culture. So I remember, I'm gonna learn as I watch this Netflix show. I remember when Scott Peterson like bleached his hair. Bag it. That's, a, <laughs> that's a sign of guilt. That's a, a man in crisis. He's been on death row for like twenty years. He right? still is like I didn't do it. Well, that's what someone. <laughs> Who did it? I mean, I believe there's a lot of people that are, like, wrongfully accused, but, like, I don't, I think he's, but I, but it was more about the trial was mishandled, there was bad, the jury selection was really crazy, I think, there were, like, the jury was, like, (laughs) they were kooky, they were starting. Well, guess what? If you have the time to serve on a jury, you're fucking starting, because you have no life, and. Don't say this to me, because I was picked for a jury once. Well, what was your life status at the time? I was working at a full time job. I was working on. A t- I was writing on a TV show. You, yeah, you would have been good on a jury. But I got, I got picked, and then I they mistrialed the first day we got there, so I didn't have to serve. That's chic. But I was. I like, got I'm- called for jury duty twice, and the first time I went, and I just made a huff and a puff. You have to huff. I had to huff and puff and <laughs> act like I was so irritated and put out like they I went through many rounds finally got called into the courtroom and I kept like looking at other people being like <sighs> and like uh, they were like do you think or any of you do you feel like you will just simply not have the ability to be impartial and I was like <laughs> and they were like we release you I was like get me the fuck out of here I I did my best but I I I remember driving home from that getting picked and I was like, I am the saddest person in the world. <laughs> like, I was literally like, I am the biggest rube in Los Angeles. They just were like this, this like. This empathetic nice, gay. This nice gay with a stable job is perfect. And I was like, I remember driving home. You would home, be perfect. And I was remember driving home and being like, I need to like reevaluate my life. And I was like almost on the verge of tears because I was like. They got me, and I'm I'm a sad human. They have my number. And then when I showed up to court and they mistrialed, I was like, this almost makes it worse. <laughs> like, I'm almost like, let me serve. <laughs> you were Stockholm Syndrome by this experience. I would have viewed it as, like, a cosmic, like, sign from the universe that, like, you're not sad and you've been, like, released by Jesus. No, I was just like, I'm... I, yeah, it was just like, God, that was such a waste of my life. The sad thing I'm a is, a stupid person. A jury, like people like you or I, are the best people to have on a jury. Like, I would probably, no, don't call me. I don't want to do it. But like, I would be star juror. Like, I am the best person because I can see everything from all angles. I'll hear people out. You are going to have to pay me. You have to put me up in a nice hotel. Do you know what what number juror I was too? How much? I was number two. <laughs> they said they <laughs> chose you real. Me and this woman back. who was number one, she sat down. She was maybe like a a few years older than me. She turned to me and she goes, "I'm number one." Like she was like, <laughs> "What the fuck?" We were. She was. This is a reckoning. No, we looked at each other and we were just like, "How are we here?" Like this is. And some people you could tell were like, 
No, the people who are like ready to fucking rock are the absolute people you do not want on a jury. Yeah. Because they're we, there to be like, they don't know. They're HOA people. They are. They're rats. Should we get into the reason for the season? Guys. Oh, this is actually huge. This is huge news. A huge development. We are coming to you with a new recap. God, you're so lucky to be listening to this right now because we're gifting you with a whole new recap of a brand new season of a brand new show that we've never talked about before. We've talked about in passing and like like here and there, here and but there. we've never devoted no. many episodes in a row to like recapping this iconic show. And we're a little behind, but we will catch up. That's yeah, it's fine. It's still in the same zeitgeist. Guys, I, I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy Unique Podcast. Podcasts. We're talking about Real Housewives of Orange County. Orange County. We'll figure out a name. A name will come to us. We don't have to do it now. Ocean omelets. <laughs> Ocean omelets? They're by the sea. An omelet? I don't know. Like eggs? I'm just trying to think of alliteration. AIDS. AIDS. Oh, egg. Eggs. A <laughs> Ocean AIDS. <laughs> Ocean omelet? I don't know. I just drove from Palm <laughs> the thing Springs. Is, I, I just always, drove two and a half hours. Why I said we don't have to think of it now is because I know when the pressure's on to do it right in the moment, we get ocean omelets. But then... <laughs> um, you know they're going to go... <laughs> they're all about to go in. You did that to your damn self. I tried to stop you. I know. Let the record show. So we're on season one of episode... Or season 18 of... Orange County Housewives. Damn. I can't believe it's eight. Like, this is wild. They're so old. <laughs> like, the as a franchise, OC. I miss Vuki. I miss Vuki. She'll be, I know, she'll I know, but I just miss Vooks. September 7th, 2023. The big day. The I remember very well. Shannon driving her car drunk into a building. Shannon, Shannon joining the kind of auspicious category of celebrities who've driven their car into houses. Yeah. Joining the ranks of some of the greats, too. Anne Heche, Billy Joel. I always... Anne Heche exists in, like, a very special part of my mind that I don't access that much because I'm truly so haunted by the video of her <laughs> driving a like, no, hundred miles an hour. Um, um, through like Santa Monica. So Shannon got blackout drunk with Archie, her poor old golden retriever in the car and drove into a house. And then the, I love the local news is like, you can see here some damage. It's like a little. It was not that damage. No, she hit like, she hit like a, the like cinder <laughs> cement of a garden. Yeah. It's NBD at the yeah. end of the day. The best part about her DUI, which they didn't mention on like the catching the viewers up to speed is that. After her DUI, she pulled the car around, parked it, and then got out of the car with Archie and pretended that she was just walking him at, like, 2 a.m. to, like, evade police. With blood dripping down her face. I'm obsessed with that. That's legend shit. It is legend. That's so, literally... Who, me? With, I love blood pouring down your, your like face. Like in a cocktail dress, yeah. probably. Out and about, as one does. As last you, walk, <laughs> as you turn away, as one does. Last walk of the night, stumbling around, <laughs> blood dripping into her eyes. So now Shannon thinks everyone is coming for her, and everyone just refers to her as the drunk that needs help. Well, sh she Not, is. No, <laughs> she is. I love Emily taking her to lunch and going, "Are you still drinking?" And Shannon goes, "I'm a two drink kind of gal right now." And Emily goes, "Do you think maybe you should?" Not drink at all. And Shannon's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gina says she got sober. She stopped drinking. Because she also had a DUI. But she said Shannon, she saw Shannon's DUI as like a wake up call for her. Like, I don't want to be old and like driving my car into a house. Yeah. I was like, whoa. It's brat when you're young and sad when you cross like. 45. And we'll get to it, obviously, but the big running theme is that Gina's kind of like, how dare you shame me for multiple seasons about my DUI and like call me a drunk and you did the same thing and even worse. Yeah. And like last season, 
I remember because I didn't watch all of last season. I like started it, but then fell off. But I do remember Shannon saying like she helped Gina with her DUI and like was alleging that Gina's kids were going to be taken away from her. And she like really helped her when like Gina needed it the most. And now I'm like, it's like, that's fucking rich. Yeah. People drunk driving into people's houses, but walking I love your it. dog. I love it. Um, Emily and Shane are happily like theragunning each other. I'm sorry, Shane. I know that they're better and he's like gotten over. I still, I hate him so much. I hate, he gives me, he makes me wretch. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. Can I say something? Can I say something real quick? Uh, I love Emily so much. Oh, I love Emily. There's, but I always have oh, just had such a soft spot for her. She just does something to me. And then by the end of this episode, I realize that maybe I'm like a little bit in love with her. She's a powerful attorney. She's a powerful woman. She's like self-assured. She makes fun of her husband. She makes fun of her husband. She's self-deprecating. She's, She's really a lawler. Smart. She's so smart. Obviously. Like I would love for her to leave Shane and I'll pick her up and take her on a date. I could see her being a late in life, Les. Me too. I think that'd be good. Once the kids are like, I'm, let's get the kids out of the house. Yeah. Let's get the kids off to college. And she won't go like the Bronwyn route of like making it like this whole, like she'll just be like, yeah. I'm no, with and woman. that's when I'll. I'm with a younger lady. Up in. How old is she? She's 48. Wow. I know. She's like. She's a 10 across the board. 10. She's fab. I love her. Yeah. She. Um, Shannon is in yoga. With Jen. She's making the class about her. The Dubros <laughs> are just talking real estate. And Jen meets Tamara at the gym. R.I.P. Cut Fitness. I know. It's a really sad thing that Cut had to close. I need to admit, say something. What? I'm kind of like, an, I'm kind of annoyed with Tamara. Which is hard for me to say because I've always loved her. But I'm kind of like, something about her in this, I'm just, I'm... Oof. Her and Eddie just give me the ick. Yeah, I feel you. I'm just something that's up. I don't know what it is. And I, I've always like, oh, fuck, my phone's battery. I've always loved Tamara. I was so happy when she came back. I loved her on Ultimate Girls Trip. Like, I've always. I ride for Tamara, but ride for she's her, rubbing me the wrong way. Um, um, Emily looks incredible. She's a truthful queen. She's like. I look this good because I've taken Ozempic and work out a lot and I got lipo. Yeah, good for her. Great. Um, Jen and Tamara were on bad terms, but they've like mended their vibes. And then we cut to Shannon. She's downsized, but moved into another house by the beach. And she's an o ocean omelet. She is an ocean omelet. Corona del Mar. And her daughters are all on their respective journeys. I love her daughter in Paris, Stella. I love her daughters. I know. Her they're, daughters are major. The twins have always been major to me. They're all like doing cool things. One of them was in New York, one's in Paris, one's in like USC or something. No, that one's in like Baylor. Is that in know. Texas? I don't know. I don't know either. But they, they seem well adjusted for everything they've been through. Yeah. And they're kind of like parenting Shannon, I think. Uh, I'll <laughs> fucking say. Shannon starts like crying to them about her DUI. And she's like, I'm just so sad that I, what a horrible example I've set for you. And she says, on the night of her DUI, she and John were fighting. And then she left his house and got in the car and decided to drive away. And she revved the engine to show him just how mad she was. And that's when she revved right into a house. So John lived nearby. I got Yeah, I think he lived like down the street from where the wreck happened. He gives me Slade energy. Yeah, he's a flop. He's like I don't someone, like him at all. Any man, like a serial housewife dater is like bad Not news. to be trusted. Um, I also, love when they're talking. Oh, what were you going to say? I just like that the fireplace has ball rocks. Balls? Like rock balls oh, it's like one yeah. of those like elect like gas fireplaces but instead We've of logs seen some of those it was just very oc it is incredibly oc they love like an uncanny object mm -hmm. she goes god has a plan for me 
her daughter's are like, I think there was a reason that maybe this happened. She goes, oh, no, God has a plan. And then back at the gym, um, Shannon, they, they mentioned that Shannon has been calling rehab a wellness retreat. I'm like, okay. Yeah. She said to Jen, you know, I went to that wellness program for a month. Wellness program? She could also just try not drinking. I know. And, like, if she feels like she literally can't stop, then maybe seek out treatment elsewhere or yeah. like another wellness program. Totally. The denial is just, it's very familiar to me and I love it. I like seeing a woman struggle with drinking. <laughs> it just is like, it really hits for me. Shannon's in her Cresha era. She's approaching Cresha. Yeah, not I don't, yet. It's like, it could go one way or the other, but I think it it is a reckoning of sorts. Yeah. Emily goes, how was Shannon at yoga class to Jen? She goes, did she fall down a lot? <laughs> it's like, damn. Tamara says she left the Trace Amigas because Shannon was drinking while they were on tour. She She's... said that she was sober and like not drinking and just having Diet Coke. But then Tamara looked closer and she was pouring vodka into her Diet Coke. She said in the green room she was looking over her shoulder and like pouring vodka in. That's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not a vodka drinker, and I think vodka and Diet Coke is disgusting. Reminds me of high school. Disgusting. 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 I think um, Tamara's being a good sober ally, being like, not, we decided like none of us were going to drink. Like in the immediate aftermath of that, like we were like, okay, we won't drink. We'll like respect you and we'll like be supporting you. And then she, here she is guzzling like, Kettle one. Even Vuki said she wouldn't drink. Maybe not Vuki, but Tamara wasn't. I think yeah. Vuki's like, come on, have a drink. I think Tamara <laughs> probably just like wanted out. Yeah, I think Vuki loves a little red wine or probably doesn't see anything that happened as that much of a problem. I T think Vuki's the best friend to have if you get a DUI. Didn't Shannon go immediately to Vuki's house? Vuki, yeah, Vuki. She is did. A, she like hid out there. Vuki is. She's like on the lam at. at Vuki is a good Laura companion. Vuki is a, like the perfect person when you've committed a crime to be like, let's just go full Thelma and Louise. Like, I believe that Vuki's like down to clown in that way at any given moment. So Shannon, again, still oversharing and talking about too much, having no boundaries with her daughter. She, they're talking about how John and Alexis are dating. Yeah, so Shannon has currently entered like a nightmare phase of life where not only did she publicly humiliate herself after a fight with her flop boyfriend, but her flop ex is now dating a much younger woman who also is recast on the show, Alexis Bellino. And who was tangentially involved with a horrific lawsuit where he had to pay fork over 300 grand to her ex-husband for defamation of character. Yeah, so Shannon reveals that before she left John's house, he said, I'm cutting ties with you. You've ruined my life and ruined my family's lives. <laughs> and that's when she said, I'm fucking out of here and revved and hit. Yeah. It's not good. And then she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I see Alexis. I might go up to her and say something. And her daughters go, Mom, please do not say anything. Like, you'll make it worse. Like, we beg of you, please. And then Shannon goes, I. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of her. She goes, let it be known. I have no fear. <laughs> Says the most terrified person in all of the land. Yeah. Wait, can we Google the lawsuit between Jim Bellino? Jim, because I want to know. So Shannon says she lost 300K defending herself. Tamara, Tamara lost 500K. And he had sued them for a million dollars for defamation. Yeah. And now I need to know like what they said. You need to know. You Tell need to me, know. baby girl, because I need to know. Poor J-Lo. J-Lo's having an August to remember, too. I'm crying that Kelly Dodd, like, reached out to Jim, being like, I'll be a character witness. He sued, initially sued, Shannon and Tamara for supposed negative comments they made about him and his former trampoline park business during a taping of Heather McDonald's Juicy Scoop oh. podcast which he claims cost him over $1 million in potential business. I have no comment on that podcast, <laughs> but trampoline. I forgot they owned a trampoline franchise. According to court documents, Judge discussed the Bellino's divorce at the 2018 podcast taping, saying, I have a theory. Everything's everything. 
everything, everything's in her name. He's going to go to jail. Yeah, he's a shady motherfucker. <laughs> McDonald then asked, do they still have the trampoline parks? Does anyone know? To which Vidor said, no, no, I heard that they don't. I heard they don't because they were sued. I won't let my kids go because people get paralyzed. Apparently that happens. She added. <laughs> yeah. The claim was made in front of 300 people in the crowd. Oh, so it was like a live show that uh, was taped. Damn. Can't tape your live shows. She eventually cut the audio out of her podcast. Damn. In 2019, a judge dismissed Valino's suit and ordered him to pay her legal fees, but he later appealed that decision. So they had to spend all that money the lawyers laughing and laughing, piercing <laughs> each other. They're like, another great day to be a lawyer. That sucks for them. Yeah. What a piece of shit. Bellino? Yeah. Yeah. Kelly Dodd had been contacting him, offering to be subpoenaed as a character witness. That bitch. She is such a bitch. I love it. <laughs> she later apologized to Judge, confessing that she was just trying to hurt her. God, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wild. Get Kelly back on this show, honestly. We need it. We need her now more than ever. In this day and age. And just like that, you can just like talk shit about the wrong fucking crazy oh, person. And then they try and snatch your wig. We cut over to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Heather DeBro. Well, Shannon says oh. also talking too much about her like personal life to her daughter. She says... Enjoy my sloppy seconds. I was like, Mom. Apparently, John has a huge cock. I know. One of her daughters said, period. Period. <laughs> Heather's so, so Heather and Terry. Heather's new house. Heather's basically should just be on Real House of Beverly Hills. I, I love this insane. She's angling, I'm sure. So she. She doesn't even live in the OC. No. Well, they have a home in. Uh somewhere in the OC and then they have a penthouse that was on Selling Sunset. It's in, their like Roberto Cavalli penthouse. Yeah, and then they have this huge ass house in the Hollywood Hills and Beverly Hills. And Cary Grant and Lana Turner both live there. Um they're taking it down to the studs. They bought it for 16 million and with all the work they're putting into it, they're going to end up spending about 32 million total on the house. <sighs> They go into a, a closet and they just see, and Heather goes, oh, look, a box with wigs. And I went, those were Cary Grants. I love their lives. Yeah, it's them. great. Do you think Terry cheats on Heather? Now I'm afraid I'm going to get sued for $300,000. This is not, this is, he, this is just what your opinion is. Um, you can't get sued for an opinion. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, is Terry gay? Gay or just like so old that they lose that they have like ED and like don't want to fuck anymore. I don't think I think they're like really they're a good team. I think they love each other. They have they have they're they're in love with each other. But I think there's like a, a true like we're going to make this work. We're a team and they're like business partners. So I have a lot of respect for them. And I love their modern family. Yeah. They have a trans son. They have like they're really they're just cool people. Their kids seem they seem very happy. well adjusted and like there's zero darkness. Well, also when Heather says that when she mentions that she and Alexis have become close, I wonder if it's because they both have Alexis as a trans child, too. Really? And she was like very evangelical, but she since lo leaving Jim. And I was just it's a child that she had this. with Jim. Yeah. Jim. Jim. She did like this really actually like beautiful posts about like the journey she's been on where she's like come to like become an accepting proud parent of a trans child and like Aww. how she's had to have a reckoning with her own like prejudices and like she's done like a 180 about like queerness and i don't know okay that makes me like her more i mean it could be for i don't know but it made me i still think she's messy but it made me like i respected her because she and jim were like scary christians yeah so i like that she's like so I wonder if Heather and her have, like, bonded over that a little. Probably. Yeah. Heather wants to have, like, a fresh start luncheon because it's the beginning of 2024. And she wants all the girls to come to a big old Heather DeBro luncheon party. In a place where she doesn't live. Yeah. <laughs> and Heather, I like her because she just loves to spend. Like, mm -hmm. she loves to throw a party and spend, like, $50,000 throwing a party. May we never forget Sarah Winchester eating the bow off 
Heather's cake. Mm -hmm. The strangest thing I've ever seen anyone do on a reality show. And I've seen a lot. She threw everyone into just absolute chaos from that one moment. Get her back on. Yeah. Gina goes over to Emily's house. Gina's on a revenge path. She, okay, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. Gina has always annoyed me. But this season, I've found myself turning a corner. Me too. I really, it's taken a long time. But now that Gina's really like letting the Long Island come out, I'm into it. Me too. I, I crave her New Yorkness. And I, she used to be too dark for me. And I couldn't, I was like, I can't look. Mm -mm. Like it was just too much. I went, my eyes, you know, it was so hard. <laughs> But now that I like that she's, like, gotten her shit together. She's a girl boss now. She's a girl boss. She's and a I real estate maven. And I like that she's just, like, coming for Jen. Yeah. Gina tells Emily that a friend of hers was at the grocery store. And Elizabeth Vargas. Who's that? I'm a friend. Okay. I uh, love that. Well, Elizabeth Vargas was at the grocery <laughs> store and saw Shannon Bedore... <laughs> Fucking with a grocery cart filled with booze. <laughs> that sounds untrue. I believe it. I like the I idea of her it, with Shannon. giant. I like the idea. Do you remember that like strange like Halloween candy commercial where that like those kids were dressed as that like woman? Never mind. What? It's just basically like a woman in a disguise in a shopping wearing a trench coat with big glasses and a wig. And, and a I'm wig. like, that's, that's Shannon. She's Samantha Jones when she went to go spy on Richard in yeah. that like brunette wig. Yes. A she grocery cart filled to the brim. $900 worth of vodka. Oh, $3,000. $3,000. Just handles. Worth of just hard We're liquor. going in. Vicky was like, I can't go to the, I'm, I'm stuck at Koto. I need you to go in and just get, no, no just get it all. I'll demo you. Ozell. I don't know if I believe this. Because I, also, like, can't you just Instacart? I just like the... But I like the visual. And I like it. It's very, like, small town drama. Mm -hmm. Um, Gina is currently in a really kind of toxic situation at home because her boyfriend... So she's been dating Travis for a long time. They've blended their families. Yeah, they have six kids between the two of them. Too many. Oof. And Travis's ex-wife is, like making their lives hell is a fucking bitch and she <laughs> and gina's and made peace with her ex yeah gina is co-parenting so she is he's hot yeah yeah but gina's made peace with her scary ex with her ex matt <laughs> and travis is somehow like locked in a never-ending divorce and his bitch of an ex-wife <laughs> just like is making his life hell and by proxy gina's life is hell plus they have six kids that are like too big to fit into bunk beds so her solve which to me this feels like you do want to break up with this person but you just can't pull the trigger on it yeah her she, solve is to like she's like we need to move into separate houses for a while with each of our respective families but not be broken up which that you're breaking up yeah i think she's she's like i love him so much i've never loved anyone much as much as him but i don't want to live with him anymore and I'm sure it's complicated to some extent, especially when, like, divorce shit gets in the mix or, like, I think people can, if you decide to just get really ugly with someone in a divorce, like, you can ruin their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And I get wanting to just be like, I don't want this anymore. But I'm also like, that's called a breakup. Yeah. Jen haunts me. Jen... Jen and her new man, Ryan, are at dinner at this place that actually looks really soothing. I crave. Yeah, it did look I nice. I want a bisque. So Jen <laughs> is also getting divorced from her ex. They have many kids together. Her ex was really rich, right? I think so. Okay. Her ex, at the very least, paid for her entire life. Like, she, I don't think, even had, like, credit cards in her name. Like, she just was fully on the payroll which is like great when the payroll is going and the relationship is going but when you get then divorced it's not so great <laughs> so jen is learning the hard way because she had to move out and 
like couldn't rent a place because she literally has like no credit. Like she literally has like nothing. She's, never She's had like a, a forty six year old woman who's just like what? Who me? Like yeah. So then Gina was like, "I got you, girl. Like I'll vouch for you." Because Gina's a realtor now. Yeah, and we'll move you into this like house that was like very expensive, but the understanding was that Jen's ex was gonna cover the rent or like the majority of the rent, and then Jen would pay a little bit. Well, now Jen is behind $24,000 on rent. She's getting evicted, posting about getting evicted on social media, and Gina's like, what the actual fuck is wrong with you? And Gina's like, it's making, it's affecting me, because it's like, this could affect my business and like my reputation, and I'm just trying to build this career, and I'm like just getting off the ground now, and you are like jeopardizing my standing in the community by being evicted and like bragging about it. Be being like a flop who can't pay her bills, who moved into a house that she couldn't afford. It makes no sense. And then meanwhile, Jen's being like, life is hard. Like, woe is me. Like, she's like, you don't understand. I've had to like ask my dad and ask Ryan, my new boyfriend, for financial support. And it's just like sucks. And I'm like, you're scaring me. And Ryan goes, well, he's like, she's complaining about the house, the housing, the eviction. He goes, well, it just makes sense that you would move in with me. And she goes, no, I don't want, like, what if we don't work out? And he goes, we will, though. And she goes, okay. I was like, oh. I love, no, don't. No, okay. I can't. I can't move in with you. And he's like, yeah, you can. And she goes, okay. We'll move in tomorrow. She. I don't give a fuck about this woman. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I think. She, get her off my TV. Look, she's, I like her because this is a messy lesson for yeah. the girls. But like, I'm supremely freaked out by her. And the song and dance that she does, which we'll get to later in the episode, where she pulls like, thank you, daddy, to her dad. Like, I was like. It was very Jamee with her dad. It was like, daddy. No, yeah. I was like, you are literally. You're you're 48. 46 years old. Yeah. Grow up. This is like. You have children. You've grown children. You have a daughter. Like, not to be like that, but. You have a this, small child. Not to be like that, but like, what kind of precedent are you setting for her? You're like, not. Also, like, aren't you making money around the show? I mean, look at Lynn Curtin. But she wasn't she one season and that was it? No, she was multiple seasons. Oh, I don't even remember. Dude, multiple seasons. No compassion. No, no compassion. No Heather compassion. and Emily meet for drinks. And Oh, Miss Bellino. Bellino Jesus steps jugs. out of her car looking snatched. She looks fab. She does look great. Um, they sit down and she everyone orders drinks and then she's like, I'll have a what does she order? Like a seltzer. Like a sparkling water and an iced tea. Okay sober queen she's really making an effort like i have my shit together i won't drink tonight she said she goes john and i met at the quiet woman shannon does not own the quiet woman it's been around since the 80s they met on november 18th so by the time this is filming they've been together like less than two months Mm -hmm. maybe a month and a half she goes we really tried to fight our feelings but your heart wants what it wants and now she's like proudly sucking and fucking John till the cows come home. He she bought her a promise ring. Promised. That she showed off on social media. She goes, she goes, we waited two weeks. And we just couldn't anymore. I was like, ew. I, I have chills because I'm like, I would kill myself if someone <laughs> did this to me. Imagine you and Simon breaking up and then like. A person that you know that's and, like, like hate. infamous that you know and you hate and you're like, I don't want anything to do with you. That'd be like if they start they got together with Simon, posted about it on social media, and then I was like, you know what this podcast really needs? A third mic. And invited them in to podcast with us. I would I would set the place on fire. No, I would truly like Sorry, Shannon. All of you would go down too. <laughs> It would be en masse. Yeah. Shannon's a fucking hero and a survivor. She for is. Me. Like, God is putting her to the fucking test. Um, John is just, he just has, he's dirty to me. They were saying that he was, like, making Shannon pay for everything at the end. And Alexis is here to clear his name. And she goes, oh, she goes, do you trust a drunk who just got a DUI? I was like, great. Love your grace. <laughs> She's a bitch. Your compassion. 
she asks Emily about what Emily said on Tamara's podcast because she's called John a douchebag. And Emily was like, he is a douchebag. And then Alexis goes, he's my Johnny J. I'm sorry. It's disgusting to call a man Johnny. I'll be real. It's gross. I've never been comfortable with Johnny. No? I I mean, I... <laughs> oh, wait. No, there is one Johnny that I am comfortable with. A great American But they've hero. always been... They've always been Johnny. It's yeah. never like... like a John to a John, let me rephrase. It's a John to a Johnny that I'm like supremely icked out by. But if someone comes in and from the jump they're just Johnny, then it's okay. She. <laughs> Are you scared? No, I'm just laughing at her going, Do you trust a drunk? Do you trust a drunk who just got a DUI? Just got a DUI? He's my Johnny J. He's, she goes, He's my Johnny J. Shannon meets with her lawyer, who this lawyer also represented Gina and her DUI, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> He's like, truly like a film, will film for 10K. I know. And Shannon loves being in a lawyer's office. This scene. She loves it. She was like, she was like, okay, like in this scene, like I, you're going to tell me like what my punishment is. And then I'm going to, I really want the audience to know that like, I'm, I'm here to do the work. So, like, you just support me in that. And he's like, got it. And 15K. And she's like, okay, 15K. Like, writes in the check. And then he's telling her, he's like, so you are sentenced to three years probation. And if you complete those, we will change your plea from no contest to not guilty. And we'll have it wiped from your record. And she goes, well, what I want to make sure of is that I'm not getting any special treatment. And I was like, bitch, your whole life is special treatment. I know. You're rich. You're rich. You grew up rich. You drove yourself into a house drunk and got arrested. And, and you're getting your off, dog. Yeah. Getting off with three years of probation, 40 hours of community service, and nine months of, like, alcohol classes. I like, I like she calls it alcohol school. Because <laughs> I go to alcohol school. That's getting off really easy. Yeah, and you're getting it wiped from your record. Yeah. <laughs> probation? Can you travel internationally on probation? I don't think so. What is probation? No, you can't. Jen Shaw couldn't go anywhere, remember? Oh, she couldn't leave the state. She couldn't leave the country. Well, but she wasn't on probation. She was, like, she had been arrested. She was on house arrest. She was, like, it was pending a trial. So, right. like, this is maybe different oh my god when i was in guess what i was in in palm springs and i was staying down the street from trixie motel and i had a flash of mary going hello is this trixie <laughs> <laughs> did you poke your head into trixie no, motel it was closed Close. i think there was no one there weird maybe I, it's a seasonal thing yeah it's it's like a i think august is in palm springs is like tumbleweeds yeah it was like 120 yesterday it's pretty crazy like i went in August once and like was staying at the Parker because that's like when they the rooms are actually if you like pool with three people yeah. you can get like a decent rate and we were at the pool in the day and there was just a layer of like people's sunscreen floating at the top of the pool it was pretty gross Nars. okay wait what are the probation laws California is strict god sucks what a drag you're an idiot for that Shan she's a dumbass yeah um, Tamara, we meet her daughter Sophia for the first time. Jump scare it, Sophia. I, know. I was like, what? She goes, Sophia's been here the whole time. My ex, my, she, she basically goes, my fucking asshole ex wouldn't let me film with her ever. So you never saw her, but she was always with me. And Sophia looks like a Greenwich Village hipster from the 1960s in her like newsboy cap. I'm like, who is this Joan she's Baez? She's like an extra in the marvelous Miss Maisel yeah, at the she, comedy club. She's literally that. <laughs> Uh, the she's the manager. The manager. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, Sophie's like, it just she looks nothing like Tamara. No, it just they have me. similar eyes, I think, a little bit, but they're now going to go get a tattoo together. Tamara's getting angel numbers. Tamara's also like this really weirded me out. Was like clearly trying to bring up like family issues to talk about on camera with. Sophia she's like, I'm not talking about and that. she's like I don't I'm not gonna talk about that with you and I was like that I don't like that I wanted Rico the tattoo artist to 
pound plow, you. Plow my hole. I literally knew that as I saw his face. I was like, Carrie wants to plow him. He I wants did. to get plowed. I was like all about <laughs> the stretch. With I, I, I literally astral projected to a place of your own hole stretching <laughs> for Rico. And I knew. <laughs> I, in knew, that moment, do, I became your you, stretched hole. <laughs> I went. You literally, you transmorphifications and went. What? Yeah. Ooh. That's Dune sister show. True allies. <laughs> the Bene Gesserits. <laughs> Tamara, it's like, you know what I really want? After she tried to like bring up the dad and Sophie was like, shut up, mom. She's like, maybe you think. Did Nemo ever talk to me again? And Sophie was like, Mom, what the fuck is wrong like, with you? I don't you? want to talk about this. What um, is Sydney so mad about? I don't know. It's a little Get weird. over it. Get over it. Yeah. Are Come you on. an adult now? Yeah, she's like 38. <laughs> That's a divorce that I'm like, I can't. Damn. They were so bad for each other. Um, Gina and Travis decide to live separately. <laughs> They're chatting about... Their breakup that's being called just moving into separate homes. Travis is like, you're breaking up with me. And Gina's like, no, I'm not. No. 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 God damn it. I'm not breaking up with you. This is just so. But she's also doing a thing I don't like where she's like, this is just so hard. And it's like, yeah, it's hard because you're breaking up. And she's like, no, that's not what it is. Who does he look like? He looked like someone to me. I'm too distracted by her looking like Tim Dillon. <laughs> Like when Tim dressed up like Meghan McCain. You know what I was thinking? Meghan McCain and Bethany should have their own show together. That would, that would be, be... They would unleash fucking chaos They could just world. call it Yappers. <laughs> just... Well, no, I got good... something to say. <laughs> I want Meghan McCain and Yappers Bethany. would be a great name for a podcast. Put them in a room together and see what happens. It combusts. There would be blood at the end. Um. Yeah, this kind of depressed me. Shannon's getting glam for the big luncheon. And she goes, I bought a Givenchy dress and it's a little tight. And her makeup artist goes, she's like, you're skinny as hell. Like you're going to, you've got this girl. And then Shannon just looks off into the distance. She goes, I'm really not in the mood for viciousness today. And I was like, that's me. Shannon. That's me on the page. <laughs> Shannon got a facelift or something because she looks. I think she got a lip lift. She looks so good. She looks great, but it also is a little uncanny. No, it's like Insta filter. But I'm like, but whatever it is, girl. Jen is also getting glam, and I'm like, how are how you? the fuck are you paying for glam right now? And you're getting evicted. This is like when my dad, when I was like in my the end of my addiction, and I would like hit my dad up for money and be like, can I? Can, and he'd be like, okay, I'll put twenty five dollars into your account. For food, and I'd be like, "Thanks," and I would immediately take it out and overdraft and buy drugs. That's the, like what you're. It's like her dad's like giving her like a couple thousand, and she's spending it on glam. I just had a moment. No? no, totally. I just I had a moment that was taken back to my own like period of deep financial woes when I was Airbnb in my apartment and like living with my boyfriend at the time. Like when I would Airbnb. And we went grocery shopping one day because I was going to make dinner and we were in Trader Joe's and he didn't have sea salt. He just had like Morton salt and that simply wouldn't do for me. And I <laughs> put I put a sea salt in the shopping cart and he was like like Himalayan sea salt. Yeah. Just like a sea. Like, a I yeah, you need sea and he salt. was like, no. And he was like. No. And I was like, what? Like a. Uh, we need sea salt and he was like this is your problem is like you want to buy things like sea salt but you're like broke you can't have the sea salt and I was like can I please just get the sea salt and he was like no and then I truly almost broke up with him on the spot who was, I was this like, man I was like I'm gonna have to like go sit in the car I like can't be in the grocery store even though he was like even though he was being like truly like loving and like real no, with, real it, with you I'm sorry <laughs> Sea salt's two ninety nine at Trader Joe's. Let me have the fucking sea salt. I'm homeless. I'm homeless, not toothless. Give me my fucking sea salt. 
I'm by. I'm I was making a joke. Too. I was crazy. Laura, I was making a joke. No, I know, but the crazy thing. No, too he was being. He was being a salt fascia. I was paying for the groceries, so he was shamed, and he was like, "You're." Making, he shamed you. He was like, "You're making like really irresponsible." You're like, "I don't need this right now, motherfucker. I no. want the fucking pink salt, and you're gonna sit over there and watch me buy it, and then later you're gonna watch me sprinkle it on my fucking steak." Then you don't use the sea salt. Then I will use it's it. It's three dollars. And he was like, you're incredibly irresponsible with money. And I Who was, was like. this fuck face? We don't even. Did I ever meet him? It's over. No. You didn't meet him. No. Nope. He was before your era. But I was like. I literally just left. That's shocking. I left there's all a way, the groceries. There's a way and to... I said, I can't do this. And went and cried in the car. You went. I went. That's shocking. What a, what a fuck phrase. People have tried to like go to war with me over sea salt multiple times in my life and I'm here to tell you like you will lose the battle. What's the difference between what what's what's one dollar? Two ninety nine. I'm sorry, that's not a make or break. That's not glam. Glam is like five hundred dollars. Sea salt at Trader Joe's, everything's like four dollars. He was like, there. I'm being loving I'm giving you loving No, he was like tough love. Tough I was love, like baby. I'm gonna kill you in your sleep and <laughs> sprinkle sea salt over your body and preserve it. People won't find you until the smell. Don't and, ever. And then I'll tell them what happened and they'll go, you were right to do it. Thank you. That just was give rude. A girl, that was rude. Give a girl a little sea salt. When things are going bad, someone just wants a little Himalayan sea salt. You know what? When a bitch needs sea salt, you, gotta give you it to cannot her. question it. Mm-mm. Let her pay the two ninety nine, Bitch. <laughs> Alexis had a sleepover with John. She gets picked up by Emily and she's like, I am so tired. Like, oh, I, just... I hate when people, <laughs> I hate when people, I remember one time in college, I was visiting my friend and, and she was talking about her new sig O, and she was like, didn't sleep last night. We were fucking all night. And I was like, I went, oh, <laughs> gross. That's the sad thing Leave is like out. when you're getting dicked the fuck down, the only person that cares about it is you and everyone else is like, I don't really need to know. I mean, there's a, Sometimes, Sometimes they it's fun, know. but then it, then there's a certain point where it's like, okay, where it's like we get it. We know what we know what it's what it hap- We know what it's like. <laughs> I love. It. I'm so tired. So my pussy's so sore. John, John and I had a sleepover last so night. So hard. He was fucking me and not Shannon all night. <laughs> Gina picks up Katie, oh, the cast member. Love Katie. Love, 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 love. Needed she her. So she's so gorgeous and she's she's elegant. Gorgeous, smart, accomplished, ready to go in, not, no nonsense. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love her. And her outfit is great, too. Love it. Everyone gets to Heather's big old party. Gina goes, I'm happy that I have a young friend. Which I was like, fuck. Gina was like, I just am itching to hang out with some ladies my age. And I was like, all right. They go to the Balboa Bay Club and Heather's just getting ready. She loves throwing a luncheon. Mm Mm-hmm. Katie says that she's actually met Heather before, but this is the first time that Heather deigned to say hello back. I like that. And this is going to set off. I knew in this moment that they're laying groundwork for like a, a potential feud. Heather takedown and a feud. But I love it when it's so Sunset Boulevard when like a young ingenue comes in. Or all wait, about Eve. And no, all about Eve. Yeah, when the young yeah. housewife comes in and just tries to snatch like an OG's wig. I like I like the music went when she said that. Also, Katie, I think, got on the show or her link is Sutton, which I was like, that's Oh yes, she goes, My friend Sutton. I was like, Oh yes, your friend Sutton. Powerful. But I was like, powerful, powerful, powerful. Gina is in hot They have a wishing wall, which I was like, lose me with the wishing wall. I don't like all that stuff. Can we just eat lunch? Can Why do we have eat? to like Why are do we... all these things? It looks hot in there. The windows look hot. Gina's in hot water because of Jen's eviction. She's like furious. And then Alexis arrives and there's espresso martinis at the event, but they have these like weird toppers put on them Mm -hmm. that like coagulate into like a sick like snail mucin mask. It looked nasty. Yeah. And Emily spits hers out back into her drink. They're like, what's wrong with you? And she goes, disgusting she goes but should i drink it anyways she's like whatever i drink out for my dog god i love her she's my kind of woman you're gonna date her i am manifest get those kids out of the house yeah i don't want to deal with them the sexy widow herself shannon arrives her slow-mo walk into 
the luncheon. Her little cleavage keyhole. cut out. Yeah. Her little porthole. I love to. <laughs> she walks in. She goes to say hi. She look like, you look like Janine Garofalo and she Romeo is. and Michelle walking in with that black like little number on. I loved it. She goes up to Gina and like apologizes to her, which I thought was big of her. And then she says, She needs friends. She goes, After my DUI, I kept a close circle around me and I haven't really ventured out of that yet. <laughs> the drama. Vuki is her close circle. Vuki. <laughs> In OC, when you close the circle, you're only hanging out with Vuki. <laughs> Vuki is <laughs> it. Vuki's who you run to. This used to be my playground. Vuki goes, just pour a glass of white. Just pour you a glass of white and let's Come on. talk it out. Come on, I'll give you a shard. Um, Emily says that she can't divorce Shane because he'll, he would date a 25-year-old hot chick and she couldn't handle it. And I was like, that's I, when I think he would date a man. That's when, uh, that's when you come in. That's when I come in. I go, hey. How about a 40-year-old hot chick? Hop in here, little mama. <laughs> hop into my... What kind of car I gotta get a, like a, a hot car. Yeah. I need like a convertible. You need like a Mustang. Mm hmm. And I, I can no, drive. No, a pickup truck. I go, Come get on. on in. She gets in, and then I'm driving her, and I grab her arm and. <laughs> <laughs> and then you drive your, your car, right, your truck right into a house. Yeah. Um, Shannon beelines to Alexis, and she goes, Can we have a chat outside, Alexis? And she goes, yeah, we can, we can go outside. Sure. Where are we going to go? What's going on? Let's go out. And they go out and Shannon, Alexis walks to the far corner of the deck. And then Shannon awkwardly drags a table over. And, she, and Alexis goes, okay, let me help you. Let me help you. And then all the women gather at the window. Shannon is in a perpetual state of humiliation. The way they made her get in that 360 degree photo booth. I, I was like, leave this woman alone. No one else did it. She has been through enough. I went, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm so Julia. <laughs> they go outside and Heather goes up to Tamara and she goes, is it wrong to watch? And they all go, no, let's go. And then who, she, Tamara goes, who reads lips? And Emily goes, I read lips. Come on. I loved it. Yeah, they're all peering around the corner. And Shannon confronts Alex. She's like, your ex-husband sued me for defamation. And I know that you had something to do with that. And then you, you sent me and Tamara a cease and desist letter. And Alexis goes, no, I didn't. She goes, no, I literally have the, like you signed it. She goes, show me. Show, show me, me the letter. Show me the receipts. And Shannon goes, OK, now you're getting a little angry. And I said the angriest person. Shannon is very passive aggressive. Oh, Shannon's yeah. an angry one. She's brimming with rage. And she's not actually addressing the biggest issue is just that you're fucking John. Yeah. And, like, you're she, on this show. I think it's almost too much for her to even... She hasn't gotten to a place of being able to, no. like, spiritually no. embody that yet. Shannon, yeah, she won't say the actual problem. And Alexis is like, it's done. Like, I was divorced from Jim for six months when he filed that lawsuit. Like, I have nothing to do with him. Like, it's over. It's done. And Shannon goes, well, I'm still out money. It's not done. It's never done. She goes, $300,000. That's a lot of money. He put me out money. And then he le and then he walks, she starts trucking away. And then Alexis goes. Alexis goes, it's over and it's done. And if you can't get over it, then there's the door, Shannon Bedore. And Shannon goes, oh. she's momentarily gagged. And Alexis goes, I'm out of here. And Shannon goes, she goes, thank you for taking my man away from me. And Alexis goes, well, I'm glad he left you. Whoa. I need Shannon to like. And Shannon goes. <laughs> Why I oughta? Shannon's like ducking under a table to drink minis. She needs. She's about to go full shibli. I bet John told her to say, "There's the door, Shannon the door, that pig." Shannon's very brave. I'm out three hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. <laughs> There's the door, Shannon the door. That's not even that smart. I know she worked. Up. I was like, how long did you take the workshop? Though? Yeah, I don't like it. I anyway, love it. I'm obsessed with this season. I love these ladies. They're teaching me a lot about life, a lot about myself. And let's read off a list of people who teach us about our lives and ourselves. A list of inspirations. That we never want to see the door for them. No. Please Here's, come. There's the door. Come on in. Come on in. Be with us. Be with us. Come, come Vuki with us. Our Vukis. <laughs>
Vuki, our Vuki. Our Vuki level patrons. Our Vuki level. There should be a band called Vicky. The v- Gunvalsons. Vicky Vickies. and the Gunvalsons. Okay, wait. Let's read it in Vicky voice. Chrissy Ballahan. <laughs> Hillary, you're two L's. Pia and Jordan listen in the background. <laughs> she Irish. She's crazy. Alex Delisle. Makeup fresh. Obviously. Sophie from Cleveland. Emily Bond, get in here. Gina Sapienza. Sarah Elizabeth from Boston. Lucy from London. Brooke Johansson. Lilia Farrell. Rachel Knight. Gerd Queen of Brooklyn. FFK Lil Burpee. Brittany Date Night Wise. Daily McMillie. Lady Swamp Witch gives no fucks. Jessica Hernandez. Malzatov Lals. Mary. Katie Sulin. Mike Earhart. <laughs> Jared Bomb Realtor. Timothy Scheel. Rogue Stanley. Matthew Thomas. Alice Robinson. Cheeseburger Bay, Mariah K, Kathy Bees, Kit Moore, Hillary from Chicago, Orlando, Patron of the Farts, David from Switzerland, Sedara Stick, Emily, Kim Lucas, Drew from Toronto, Kenny the Supplier, RJ, Modern Counseling, McLean, Virginia, Pradima Jeffrey. Thank you. You literally took it to a place of, they're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> I took it to a place of Celtic, Celtic Nam. We love our cult. We love all of our patrons. Love you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.